The Netflix Daredevil series has to be commended for its consistent standard of quality. I rate this season as high, if not better, than the first season, which was absolutely stellar. As a character study, a hard knuckle action superhero show, and a crime procedural like Law and Order, it makes for very compelling viewing. All three seasons are very different without losing the underlying tapestry that makes the show familiar. Season 2 was the most fantastic of the series so far and satisfies very much in that regard. Now season 3 is a great success in my opinion because it had to at the very least measure up to its predecessors. But it does went even better. I believe it surpasses the previous series as a character study and displays the effect of strong character arcs. Character transformation is necessary to create a believable and enjoyable narrative journey and Daredevil Season 3 completely understands this and exploits this tool fully. A challenge Season 3 was facing right off the bat was making the audience care about Matt Murdock or Daredevil's plight, his goals once again. They've thrown Fisk at him, they threw the Punisher at him, then Elektra and some ninjas. In a way, this was the season the show had to prove that it was here to stay. This is a challenge for any narrative, especially serialized properties. And a good tool that is used to coax audience empathy for the plight of a familiar hero is to strip him of his powers, like in the first Thor movie where he loses his hammer and isn't worthy enough to wield it. Or in The Martian, a stranded astronaut without any means of survival but his very own sense of agency, taking them back to square one, or even worse. And that's where we find Daredevil. After sustaining a serious injury in an explosion, Daredevil loses the primary tool that helps him interact with the world. He essentially becomes blind, for real this time. This makes Daredevil vulnerable. He isn't the unstoppable super ninja we've come to know him as. So his confrontations always have a real sense of danger and risk, and the writers consistently utilize this tool throughout the series. Even the promotional art for the season depicts Daredevil ripping through the husk of what he used to be, reverting to the old costume, the black costume from season 1, going back to basics, reconnecting with the things that made him the hero in the first place. Compared to the first season, every action scene in season 3 is filled with a lot more tension and serves to further enrich the characters and the story. Daredevil has to go up against threats that he can barely measure up to, and it shows in every confrontation and the effects thereafter. There are way less action sequences in this season compared to the first two, and it leans heavily towards character development, and it works. Instead of utilizing cool action scenes as the primary vehicle for the show, this season concentrates on the character's motives, hidden or otherwise, and how they lead to physical confrontations. So as many of you already know, Bullseye is the major physical antagonist in this season and his story and development is definitely one of the most intriguing that I've ever watched. Without knowing any better, anyone watching the show, particularly Bullseye's character development, wouldn't believe that they're watching a superhero show. It plays more like a gritty crime drama featuring a very skillful psychopath, something like John Wick meets Taxi Driver. Bullseye is a complete badass in this show. His unique super aim perfectly counters Daredevil's super senses. And the sequences are very imaginative and are never depicted as epic displays of superpowers. The action is grounded and realistic even though the characters are doing extraordinary things. His story is treated with great subtlety and nuance which is the same for every major character in the show and it does so while respecting story arcs developed in the previous seasons and ties it all up together in a very very tight show. This season follows Wilson Fisk as he transforms into the Kingpin. Fisk is a monster and the writers do such a good job of giving his character dimension and depth therefore they never portray him as cartoonish. That being said, there are moments in the season he is very much like the Kingpin depicted in the Spider-Man cartoon of the 90s, an infallible criminal mastermind who is always 10 steps ahead of his enemies. His hyper-intelligence and skill at manipulation is treated as a superpower in its own right. Wilson Fisk knows exactly how to manipulate anyone because everyone is vulnerable somewhere. There's a sequence that shows this perfectly where Fisk digs into the files of an FBI agent on his detail. 
Instead of showing him read through a bunch of files, the directors ingeniously place Fisk in the past memory of the agent of interest. Through Fisk, we experience and bear witness to the defining traumas of the agent, which in turn gives Fisk a way in. So Wilson Fisk really physically confronts anyone in this season. He's strictly the man in the shadows and also in the light. Even the final confrontation between Kingpin and Daredevil goes beyond just physical showdown, where they're just beating each other to a pulp and it ends there, with Daredevil standing over the defeated Kingpin. This was a great choice, because we've seen that before. The end of season 3 is a character arc in itself. The very end of the show results in the transformation of both the Kingpin and Daredevil. Symbolically speaking, this season follows the rebirth of Daredevil and the rise of the crime mastermind Kingpin. Daredevil season 3 is Kingpin's season. He plays everybody and is engaging as hell to watch. He goes from convict to kingpin as this dark superhero street opera splashes out onto the streets and affects the lives of everyone in Hell's Kitchen. I enjoyed this season because it wasn't trying to do anything else but staying true to the characters and their transformations throughout each episode. It was a very tight season and unapologetically so. It's as though the writer decided to explore every dark corner of the Netflix Daredevil lore so far. So no stone was left unturned. We even get Karen Page's story, which she's been hiding since season one. And it adds to her already complicated character because of how it differentiates how she was in the small town to the Karen Page you now know living in New York. But that serves as yet another solid piece of storytelling to the already compelling pieces that have come so far in the season. It primes us for the coming chaos and the eventual conclusion. I'm glad it feels different from the unbelievably action-packed Season 2, where the Punisher and the Lecture and a bunch of ninjas were tearing up the streets of Hell's Kitchen, which is awesome and makes the Netflix Daredevil world rich and colorful. This season focuses on parallels and the characteristics all the characters share and ultimately what differentiates them. By the end of the season, the characters feel real and lived in. For instance, there's a great parallel between Matt Murdock and Point Dexter, that is, Bullseye. They both grew up without a father and mother. They had to seek guidance from other sources like the military and the FBI in Bullseye's case. This is a powerful tool in the story because it shows that both the hero and villain are defined by what happened to them and all the decisions are basically based on their early childhood traumas. They're two sides of the same coin. Another character that plays a major role in the story is an FBI agent whose choices might end up resulting in a boy growing up without his father, bringing back flashes of Matt Murdock's own loss, thereby creating empathy on the part of Daredevil. This season also delves deep into themes of friendship, love, acceptance, and forgiveness. Because of his extracurricular activities, Matt always seems to at least push his friends away and at the very worst, get them killed. So his relationships are very complicated and the show doesn't shy away from exploring the people on the receiving end of this. The neglect, lies, questionable actions of the ones they love are brought to light for judgment and to see if their ties could still hold. Foggy and Karen struggle with this problem regarding their friend Matt and it's also reflected in Kingpin's relationship with Vanessa, the love of his life. She plays a very important role in this season even though she doesn't appear very much in it. She is the rock that humanizes the broken psychopathic monster that is Fisk. And to illustrate this, there's a great sequence in the last episode where Fisk and Vanessa are in their dressing room having a conversation about the evening's event. The sequence ends with a shot of Fisk with Vanessa sitting behind him. And because of the great composition, it appears as though Fisk now has two heads, his and Vanessa's, symbolizing the transformation of Fisk or Fisk's growth. The ship now has two captains, and it feels like a triumph for Fisk because it suggests that a monster like Fisk found someone who is willing to be in his life, accept him, and play a part in his nefarious and evil enterprise. Really great character stuff. Ultimately, Season 3 seems to be following in the footsteps of the supremely character-driven Punisher, also released by Netflix. 
Daredevil Season 3 proves that solid characters and motors with action that complements these characterizations makes for a compelling superhero show. That makes sense because a TV show cannot produce the limitless fantasy land that is comics. But it has its own innate tools that can be used to evoke the emotions produced by comic books. For instance, by allowing the grounded limitations of television production to do what it does best, which is explore human nature, it connects us to the more fantastic portrayals in their comic book counterparts. The themes iconic to the Daredevil comic books are played out in this show. Daredevil becomes the man without fear, and you believe it because of the journey the season has just taken you on. You experience that painful rebirth Matt Murdock has to endure to find hope once again, and it is palpable. This was a great watch for me, especially after the recently released and highly passable Venom. Venom is like Daredevil without his father, Jack Murdock, being murdered. He gets blinded by the chemicals and develops super senses and fights crime, but it would not be as entertaining because his actions are not driven by the trauma he suffered when he lost his father to criminals. That's Venom without Spider-Man playing the most important role in his creation. And to prove that point, Tom Hardy's Venom doesn't display the spider symbol on his chest. He has nothing to do with Spider-Man. All that drama has gone. Which is like shooting off both your legs and convincing yourself you can still do The Running Man. So Netflix Daredevil has come very far, especially considering the wavering quality of its counterparts in Iron Fist to Luke Cage and Jessica Jones and even The Defenders. So I highly recommend that everyone give Daredevil Season 3 a watch because it's a great show and you'll have a good time. So thanks for watching and if you'd like to support the channel, please like the video and subscribe to Choice Cuts.